Hi, this is VU Calculus. We're doing topic four, uh, which is the power rule and sum and difference rules. Uh, so in topic three, we spent a lot of time doing the derivative the long way, quote unquote, using the difference quotient and the limit definition of a derivative. And you probably hated it because everybody always does. Um, so in actuality, when you're finding uh, derivatives or when you're differentiating, which is the word for it generally, uh, in calculus, you're going to, instead of using that really dr drawn out, long, difficult limit definition process, you're going to use uh, a number of rules that you memorize that are quite straightforward and simple derivatives. Uh, so you're going to learn these derivative rules and then apply them, and we're going to work through a handful of them uh, over the course of the next several days in this class, and uh, we're going to start with, with the one that comes up a lot, sort of the most basic one, uh, which is the power rule. So if you have some function x to the n, the derivative of that function with respect to x, so the way we write that is d dx, take the derivative, that tells you to differentiate with respect to x, is n x to the n minus 1, meaning whatever the power is at the top, you drop that power down in front and make it a coefficient, and you lower the power by 1. The other rules that are worth mentioning today, because they're going to come up as we do some of these problems, are going to be the sum and difference rules, but we're going to work through them after we get through uh, examples one, two, and three, right? So we're gonna we're gonna talk about this after we get through examples one, two, and three. So let's start with example one. So in example one, we're asked to find f prime of x, and we're given uh, a number of we're given a one a, which is f of x equals x cubed, and we're given a one b, which is f of x equals five x to the sixth, and one c, uh, which is f of x is ten and 1d, which is f of x equals x squared over 8. Okay, so let's start with a. So a looks almost exactly like this rule that I gave you, the x to the n, right? Except in this situation, n is 3, right? x to the third. So if I want to find f prime, what I'm going to do, my f prime of x is going to be, I drop the power down in front, so 3, x to the 3 minus 1, but really most of us are probably just going to skip directly to 3x squared. It's okay if your brain is like, yo, I can do 3 minus 1 in my head. Legit, that's awesome. Congratulations, totally fine. Now, for b, there's a coefficient of 5 in front of my x to a power. That's fine, right? A coefficient's fine. When I want to find f prime, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and drop that 6 down in front of the 5x and then lower the power by 1, which will be 6 minus 1, or 5. So I'm going to get 30x to the 5th. That's how we apply the power rule, okay? Um, now, this next one, right, this next one, f of x equals 10, you're probably thinking, okay, great, but where's the power of x? Well, let me correct this a little. This is the same as saying 10x to the 0 right? So, because there's no x at all, right? So, that means that my f prime of x is 0 times 10x to the negative first, but it doesn't really matter that it's next to negative first because there's a 0 there, right? So, it is worth noting that the derivative with respect to x of some constant, we'll call c a constant, is always going to be 0. Because if there's a constant, like this 10, there's an x to the 0 sitting next to it. So when you drop the 0 down in front, the whole thing gets wiped out, and the derivative of a constant is 0. The last one's a little tricky because it looks like it's a quotient, and you don't know how to deal with a quotient yet. You don't know how to deal with division yet. So instead, I'm going to rewrite this as a, a 1 8th coefficient in front of an x squared. Right? So this is just a coefficient, just like the 5 was up here, right? So that means that my f prime of x is going to be, I'm going to drop the 2 down in front, so it'll be 2 eighths x to the first. So my f prime is probably just going to be written as a 1 fourth x or an x over 4, right? Either of those are fine. And you could keep it as an x to the first, it's just a little weird. We don't usually bother to write the x to the first. All right, so that's our example one. Uh, what we're going to walk through next is we're going to walk through example two, which talks about negative exponents. So when we go to do example two, I can still have something that's the power rule, even if it doesn't have a nice, happy, like, x cubed. It could be something else. So let's talk about example two. So in example two, we're still finding f prime, right? But in this example, we're talking about what happens if we have negative exponents. So let's start with 2a, my f of x is going to be 3x to the negative fourth, and then right here we'll have a 2b, and my f of x is a 5 over an x squared. Okay, so let's start with 2a. 
So in 2a, I can go ahead and apply that power rule, right? So my f prime of x is going to be, I'll drop the negative 4 down in front, and it's 3x. So now this is where people get a little confused. I have to take this negative 4 and subtract 1. A lot of us accidentally want to make this a negative 3, but that's not what it is, right? If you take a negative 4 and lower it by 1, make it 1, 1 lower numerically, that's a negative 5. So I'm going to get negative 12x to the negative 5th. Now that's a totally fine answer. The other way you might see this answer written is that f prime of x equals negative 12 over an x to the 5th, right? Because a negative exponent means, hey, I'm on the wrong floor. Sorry, my prime was a little bit messy, so let's try and make it a little better. Okay, cool. Let's talk about 2b. So the ending of this 2a is a little bit of a like helpful predictor for how we're going to have to do 2b. Right now, you don't know how to deal with division, but you don't have to because you can actually rewrite this thing, right? You can rewrite this using the rules of exponents to be a 5x to the negative second. And now you can derive, right? Now you can differentiate. So when we differentiate now, I use the power rule and say, cool, my f prime is a drop the negative 2 down times that 5, sorry, sometimes my brain is slow, times that 5, x to the negative 2 minus 1, which is going to be a negative 3. So I get that my f prime is a negative 10 x to the negative 3rd or a negative 10 on top of an x cubed. Either of those would be fine, right? So uh, that's example 1 and 2. All right. We're going to walk through one more example, and then in our next video, we'll talk about the sum and difference formulae. All right, so in example three, we're going to talk about fractional exponents. Everybody loves a good fraction. Okay, so example three, same task. We're still finding f prime of x, right? Uh, we have 3a, which is f of x equals 7x to the one-third, and we have 3b, f of x equals a 15 times the square root of x. All right, let's start with seven, uh, with uh, 3a. So 7x to the 1 third. Again, that's a 7 times an x to a power. I can use the power rule. So my f prime of x, I'm going to drop the 1 third down in front, so it'll be 1 third times the 7, x to the, and then my power becomes 1 third minus 1. If you can do that in your head, awesome. If you can't, that's also fine. So I have a 7 thirds, x to the, this is going to end up being a 1 third minus 3 thirds. So it'll be a negative 2 thirds, right? So I can either leave my answer, and honestly, I would probably leave this answer like this. That's fine. Or you can say, hey, that negative exponent puts this on the wrong floor. So I could make this a 7 on top of a 3x to the regular 2 thirds, because now it's on the right floor. Or if I really wanted, I could rewrite that as a root, because this is the cube root. So it's a, it's a 7 over a 3 times the cube root of x squared, which is also fine if you want. Any of these would be fine. If I were you, I'd probably stop while I was ahead and leave it at the first one. So knowing that, let's go ahead and walk through the second one. So again, the secret here sort of lies in that simplifying that we did at the end of this. You need to know that the square root of x is actually an x to the 1 half. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite this as f of x equals a 15 times an x to the 1 half. Now I can do my differentiating, right? So, so now differentiate. Okay, so my f prime of x is going to be I drop the 1 half down in front. So 1 half times 15 will be 15 halves. <coughs> x to the 1 half minus 1. <coughs> Excuse me. 1 half minus 1 is a 1 half minus 2 halves. So that's a negative 1 half. So my answer is going to be f prime of x equals 15 over 2 x to the negative 1 half. That answer's fine. Or you could put that on the bottom because that negative exponent, so 15 over 2 times an x to the 1 half. Or you could make the x to the 1 half into a square root. 15 over 2 root x would also be fine. So any of those options would be fine. Uh, they're all equivalent.